Hey everyone, Scott Wood here, Mr. Punchline. And you know, the first time Mark Christopher Lawrence approached me to do a show, naturally, I'm like, no. But then the second time, he's all like, hey, does this rag smell like chloroform? So, here I am. I feel drowsy. Why clean? Why, why, why are, you, are you a squeak clean cop? Uh, because I reach everybody. I mean, I want everyone to laugh. I mean, when I was in the fourth grade, I said, I'm going to be a comic. I mean, I watched all the old comics and all the old guys from, from you, you know, to Rodney, to Milton Berle, and Steve Allen, and, and Carson, and they were all clean. They did the variety shows, but they reached everybody. You know, I don't down the dirty comics, but if you can work clean, you reach more people. You know, you got guys like Brian Regan and Jim Gaffigan. I mean, they're doing theaters, like this beautiful theater, man. They're filling, they're not just doing clubs, and they're getting 16 and 15 year old kids and 13. Everyone's buying a ticket. Now everyone buys a ticket, mm -hmm. he's making more money, right? Now you are, in, in my opinion, the only guy around that, right. that's doing sort of that Rodney Dangerfield right. set up punch, set up punch, right. set up punch. Scott Wood, Mr. Punchline. Why was that the style that you gravitated towards? Well, because, you know, one-liners, quick, fast, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not getting any older, you know, or younger rather. We'll fix that up later in post. But anyway, so for me, you know, like you in a lot of comics, you tell stories, you know, funny stories, but for me, I just want to just do, just, just keep hammering them. Who, who's your favorite comic that's out there right now? Uh, there's a lot of them. Again, Brian Regan, Jim Gaffigan. <clears throat> There's a few guys, you know, I, you are one of them. Jo Jordan Connolly. There's a bunch of guys out there that I really respect that are doing it, you know, working yeah. the clubs. But they're clean, too. You know, they bring it. They bring it hard. Example, I did a show two nights ago, and wow. all the comics ahead of me were filthy. Filthy, filthy, filthy. The audience was eating it up. I mean, I was even going, wow, this is that kind of audience. They were they were rolling. And, uh, but the booker goes, Scott, I brought you in to headline and close because, you know, that, that's, you know, I know you don't have to worry about that. I went up, Mark. I, I mean, thank God, I destroyed. I destroyed. I got a standing ovation mm -hmm. when the other comics did not. And other, the other people were saying, you were so funny, Scott, and you weren't even dirty. Because a couple people got up and left. Yeah. But if you can hammer for 45 to an hour like the greats and not even use one curse word yeah. and just hammer... But you got to reach the audience and know who they are. And uh, yeah, I want to be asked back, so. Have you ever just flat out bombed? No, no, of course I have. We all have. We've all had bad shows. It. Never, yeah, right. <laughs> you get bad shows. I did a show last week. They were so drunk, they didn't even know I was there. Yeah, that was a weird church. <laughs> but anyway, it's a Catholic church in Vegas. Anyway, <laughs> Our Lady of the Scotch and Soda. But anyway. <laughs> Catholics are in shape. Do you know that? You gotta be in shape to be Catholic. I did a whole church service. Stand, sit, kneel, stand. I'm like, I come to church so I don't feel the burn for crying out loud. I said, do you have a low impact mass? Do you remember a specific set where you started out? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. And then every joke just failed. Yeah, yeah. But uh, enough about my family reunions. <laughs> do when that's happening. Man, you know, I usually pull out a weapon or, um, I'm just kidding, I pull out two weapons because, you know, you just gotta go with it, Mark. You know, like you just kinda kinda, you know, and I, and I know like us, like we're inside going, you know, what the heck is going on? I know I just did this last night and, and the other place- and it worked fine. Busted a gut. Right. You know, you could do the same show and, and you're just wondering, but every audience is different. It's not always the audience. Sometimes you just makes you work harder as yeah. a comic, like, okay, inside you're going, okay, all right, how about this? You know, yeah. let's go over here. You gotta almost gotta mind the audience for the, those comedy golden nuggets. What's your biggest fear? My biggest fear, honestly, and this is from the heart, you know, be, being a Christian man and, and, and a husband and a father to two, two kids. I mean, really, I don't even, I'm not even afraid of death or anything, you know, bombing on stage or getting, you, you, you know, I've had the heart attack, I've lost loved ones, but if I lost my wife or my kids, you know, and because you know, Yanni, you know, I've been blessed with a be beautiful woman and two great kids. To lose someone like that, I mean, you, you know, she's my best friend, so that's the only thing that would ever really scare me. You know, I'm, I'm blessed. I get to do what I love, you know, and you do too. You know, you, you do what you love and you never work a day in your life. And, and so I've been so blessed, and I know you have too, and, and you know, just to make people laugh, that's what we're here for. We're the court jesters of life, and I, I couldn't be happier. I look forward to another 30 years of doing shows, big, small. So how, how much does faith mm -hmm. influence your comedy? I mean, is it like... Do you see it as like ministry or just? Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, you know, I was doing a lot of things uh, as a young man, you know, always had in the back of my mind, that's the dream. It's like I said, since the fourth grade, saying, man, I'm funny, I can do jokes, people laugh at what I'm saying, writing mm. little jokes, doing voices. 
but then got away from that. And again, you know, alcoholic at an early age, you mm. know, folks were alcoholics, divorced, everyone went their own way. A lot of stuff, drug dealing, using every kind of drug you can imagine, just all kinds of stuff, you know, living in a drug house. Um, but it wasn't until someone, you know, shared the love of God and said, Scott, you know, you shared that you want to be a comic, but you're, you're, you're an alcoholic, you know? I mean, you're going nowhere, and, and they were right. So I just, you know, uh, heard that call of, of God in my life and that he loved me enough to go all the way to the cross. So, I mean, I appreciate that and, and did what, what I can't do and couldn't, couldn't do on my own. You know, you quit the drugs and the alcohol, but they have, a, they have just, it's a, it was a grip, it was a grip. And then, uh, I'll never do that again, and God, get me out of this. And then when, you know, when the, it passes, you go, okay, thanks God, see you next crisis or whatever, and there you mm. are drinking again, back to the cocaine, back to all that other stuff. But it wasn't until it was a real conversion where I said, you know, I'm not gonna, I can't do this anymore. I throw my hands up, I surrender. Mm -hmm. You know, you say you're real, then show me. And man, it was an instant healing. And uh, I, I've been a, a Christian man uh, and uh, raising our kids to, to love God and love church and to know that, uh, I mean, he, he is who he says he is and, and the, grave, the grave is empty. The, my pastor told me, Scott, you know what? Why don't you take your clean comedy now? And he's the one who said, go back into the clubs. Because, you know, I left the clubs when I became a mm -hmm. Christian man thinking, you know, all that cursing and all that. But he goes, you're stronger than that. You know what I'm saying? He goes, mm -hmm. you, you be that light in that dark arena, that candle. And just like the show the other night where they're dropping the F-bombs and then I get the standing O to God be the glory. And they go, you know what? You were the funniest, Scott. You, and you didn't even curse, not one time. And you made us laugh even harder than the other ones we were laughing at. And faith is very much a part of who I am, who my, my wife and kids are. Mm -hmm. God is everything to me. And any time I have a chance, I mean, I go into the prisons, the boys' homes. I do stuff for Salvation Army. I do a lot of churches, everything, you know, just to say that God's got a plan for you. Right. And no matter where you're at, man, don't worry. Some, I got, someone has my back now, and I didn't have that. When you're doing comedy, like, mm -hmm. like at a church, for example, or, right. and, and all of a sudden you're doing something in your act that you don't normally do, right? and you feel like you know, God is talking to somebody. Yeah, of course. You know, I, was, I was doing a church one time in Eureka. I hadn't sang in my act other than you know, like the little singer's bit. Right. And um, all of a sudden, I just felt led to right. sing this song, I Need You Now. Right. And I started talking about how sometimes you feel like you're going along this journey by yourself. Yeah, yeah. And you need some help. And, and, and the song started coming out bit by bit, and I'm talking, and the song starts coming out, and then I'm singing this whole song. Right. And then at the end of it, there were, there were several people that came up to the altar and, and um, it was like, you know, God was talking to somebody. Of course. And, and somebody said, I really needed that. I was like, it wasn't me. Yeah. I had nothing to do with it. It just came out and that was God talking to those people that came right, out. Right, exactly. You just gotta be that available, yeah. open, you know, it's, it's not your, 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 uh, your ability, it's your availability. Exactly. Uh, I just heard that call and I said, hey, I've tried it the world's way, I'm gonna try it God's way and, and uh, for 30 years, man. Here we it's, are. it's been a great journey. Well, well, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you came out. Yeah, we, well, we, should, we, should, we should talk about uh, you know, your book. What's the name of that book? The Fast and the Funny. It's a comedy writing book. You know, my jokes are, I, I wake up with a joke in my head or I see something or something happens to right. me. You know, The Misadventures of Mark Christopher Lawrence. That's my act. You know, I fall in the shower and break my back and, and I write a joke about it. Right. Uh, so, so maybe we can, we can take, take a look at your book and figure out, uh, you know, how to teach me one technique to write a joke. There you go. All right, Scott, so, so that's your book. That's it, The Fast and the Funny. It's a comedy writing workbook. It's not a book about comedy. It's about writing jokes, people, cranking them out. It's just like you. That, that yeah, it does. You got a chicken and, and a mic. That's it, a rubber chicken and a mic, the two key ingredients for comedy. That's comedy. And the table of contents, there's all kinds of, of things. So, so I've never taken a writing class. Really? Ever. Yeah, well, it shows and in your act. I know, that's but, what I'm saying. Um, that's what I'm, saying. I'm, 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 I'm serious. But anyway, I, uh, no. <laughs> Pick something. These are all. These are all the. These are over 25 different working. Uh, what do you call it? Exercises for you to start cranking out the joke. All right. Old words, new meaning. Old words, new meaning. So let's go there. Let's figure out what it is. It That's going require right me to know some words. Right. Old words, new <laughs> meaning. Check this out. Look, it's number 10. So basically, comedy is about this. I asked the flight attendant on board if this was a full flight. She said she had no idea if all the passengers had eaten. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, so, so what I'm doing? So the play, a play is it's on, a play. It's a play on, on words. So full flight to her meant somebody you know has already eaten or they don't want anything to eat right. because it's a full flight. So that's the great thing about being a comic. And I know George Carlin, who who could have got who got blue, of course he did, but he also was a wordsmith like comics are. And so it's just all about taking a word or a phrase. That's what comics okay. do. We see things differently. Okay. So 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 how would I start that? I, I would go. I need to find a subject. Right. So what do I want to talk about? Well, what you want to do is what I say in here is in that when you hear things, it can be taken in a different way. So as a comedian, when I was on the flight, I heard full flight. And so my comic mind says, oh, people who have eaten. So on this exercise, you keep an ear out for things that people say on a daily basis. You write it down. And then everything you hear, try to give it a different meaning. Okay. So for example, like if I said, if I heard the word punch drunk. Right. The phrase punch drunk. There you go. That, that le lends itself to, to a jokes. couple of different meanings. Right? right, exactly. Well, the other night I came home punch drunk. I was drunk and my wife punched me. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> there you go. Do, do I have to uh, write them and do them? Here's what I want to do. Is I want to just send you some words and phrases and you send me those jokes back. There you go, there you go. I'll do all the work. Again, be sure to watch Pure Comedy with comedian Mark Christopher Lawrence. The jury's still out. I'm just kidding. The home call. Punch, the bed's ready. Punch drunk. Yeah, punch That's drunk. Great. I came home drunk and my wife yeah, punched, my wife me. punched me. So you just gotta see words differently. Like I saw a sign on the freeway that said litter removal next two miles. So I rolled down my window and started throwing my trash out, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I had about two miles. Catch that ashtray, babe. <laughs> so <laughs> Or like the old one, when you get the ticket for the illegal U-turn, and you tell the cop, I didn't want to turn, but the sign said, no, you turned. turned. Right, you see? <laughs> so it's just about seeing things in a different way. Right. Yeah, so that's all you got to do. So this whole book covers that, over 20 different exercises to just, you, you know, start cranking out jokes for the act. And wow. you wrote a very nice uh, forward, and I appreciate that. Oh, did I? Yeah, yeah, you wrote the forward. The mind is a terrible thing to waste, Mark. <laughs> Yeah, that's Marcus Lawrence. I'm that's a, you. It's very tiny font. Very so I, tiny. I can't read it even with my glasses on. I'm telling you. It <laughs> says how fantastic I am yeah. and what the world's greatest comic. Oh, there you go. There you go. So, you know. And, and, and you are. It's, it's, like, it's like your mind thinks. You, you think really fast. Yeah. I mean, just then, with, with Punch Drunk, you, right. you, you came and gave me that well, misdirect. I'm, I'm keeping this I don't close. suffer from mental illness, Mark. I enjoy it. And I don't know <laughs> if you know that or not. <laughs> I self-medicate. Yeah, Hello. You, you don't Again, suffer. I'm getting nothing from this guy You don't over suffer. Here. Yanni does. Yanni, yeah. Pray for my wife. The woman is nuts. We had a little fight today. I probably, well, I called it a little fight. You know, they worded it differently on the police report. <laughs> but, um... Well, well, this is very good. Look, if, if you're an aspiring comic, you should probably try to go out and get this book. This, yeah. is, this is gonna help you. This is gonna, It'll help it's you. gonna change your life. Not this particular book, because no. I'm keeping this one. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this is this, for you. This is the fast and the funny. And the funny. Quick and easy way for writing hilarious jokes. And, and Scott Wood, Mr. Punchline, absolutely is one of my oh, favorite man, comics. So and, 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 it, and, uh, and I've worked with Rodney. Yeah, I know you have, and I appreciate yeah. That's a compliment, man. I yeah. appreciate it. Well, thank you, sir. Scott, <laughs> Mr. Punchline Wood. Uh, we'll see you in a few minutes. Do, do, do you set? I'll see you in a few minutes. All right. Boom. You married to a black girl and you don't even know how to pound? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm white. My gang name is Casper. So I'm... <laughs> Can you believe that? During the entire interview, Mark didn't once, not once, ask me where you could buy my book. Typical actor. Anyway, you can pick up my book by just going to... Welcome back to Pure Comedy, brought to you by PureFlix.com. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my good friend, Scott Wood. Thanks, man. Nice to be on the show. Thanks for coming out, man. You guys were all looking at me. You're like, hey, look, John Elway and Gary Busey had a baby. Look at that guy. <laughs> so it's nice to be here. I've been, I've been married for uh, over 20 years, been happy for two, so that's exciting. <laughs> I remember when I got engaged. Did you ever look up the word engaged in the dictionary? Look it up. It says to do battle with the enemy. Did you know that? <laughs> Then I looked up mother-in-law and said, see, engaged. It was nuts. <laughs> My mother-in-law, she lives with us, so forget about walking around the house in your underwear, right? And I told her, I said, Mom, put some pants on. What are you doing? But marriage is great, though, man. Had a little fight earlier today, too, a little fight with my wife. I, uh, I called a little fight. They worded it differently on the police report. But, um... <laughs> 
It's always something with my wife, you know? Because I close my eyes to take a little nap. She starts yelling at me, shoving me, watch the road, right? <laughs> my wife, she hates the way I drive. On the way out here to the studio, she's like, you're gonna hit someone, you're gonna hit someone. And I'm thinking, in about a minute, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Look, kids, mom is psychic. But anyway, listen, I love being married, though. But like I said, it's always something after 20 years. My wife hates the way I dress, too. She kept telling me, look at you, nothing matches. And that hurt my feelings. I was naked. <laughs> I, uh, I'm telling you, it's crazy. And uh, even after our second child, she made me get a vasectomy. Made me. And we adopted. Can you believe that? My wife is crazy. She says I watch too much TV, too. She says uh, too much TV causes short-term memory loss, right? Trying to scare me. And then, uh, oh, and then earlier today, my wife said I watch too much TV, right? She said too much TV causes short-term memory loss. <laughs> it's always something, though. We got pets, too. I don't know if anyone out here has pets. But I mean, our, dog, our dog bit the neighbor kid last week, and now the city's knocking on my door. We got to put him to sleep. I'm like, that's fine with me. I don't even like that kid. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Here's a pillow. Tell him I said night nights for crying out loud. <laughs> Stupid dog. You know, our dog is Jewish too. We got a Jewish dog. Someone rang our doorbell. He's like, oi, 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 oi. I'm not an animal lover though. I am not. Killed a huge mouse last week. Now they won't let me back into Disneyland. So that stinks. <laughs> it's expensive. It's like a hundred bucks a pop to get into Disneyland. There's four of us. Are you kidding me? I had a heart attack at the happiest place on earth for crying out loud. You got to work two jobs to take the kids anywhere. Am I right? Holy smokes. Even the people at Disneyland work two jobs. I saw Mickey Mouse take off his head. It was Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> well, they don't know what stuff costs at Disneyland. I had to put a churro on layaway for crying out loud. I could do the joke again. I said I had to put a churro on layaway, people. <laughs> You guys are fun, though. I got kids, too, so I'm just glad to be out of the house for crying out loud. And my son, my son loves dinosaurs, so I let him visit my parents. <laughs> so that's always exciting. <laughs> now they're getting old. What do you want? We're all getting old, right? You can't stop it. I'm in my late 40s. I'm 57. And uh, <laughs> that is late. I'm telling you, it's too much, man. My dad just turned 93. This is the truth. 93. I told him, 93, you could go tomorrow. He said, I hope so. I haven't gone today. I'll tell you that. <laughs> that is too much information, man. I'm worried about my dad, too. 93 years old and he still drives. The man's got a bifocal windshield. Can you believe that? <laughs> I'm telling you. Then he calls me up last week. I hit a couple of mailboxes. I said, where's the car? He said, inside the post office. <laughs> like, where's mom? She got out to get stamps. Get out of there. It's always something with my dad. Remember the older your dad got to, the higher their pants kept coming up? Remember that waist, chest, neck? My dad's 93, his belt's a headband. <laughs> He's got to unzip his fly to sneeze, for crying out loud. Had the worst childhood, too, man. My dad loves to drink. He's a big drinker. His uh, urine sample had salt around the rim. That is a big drinker. <laughs> Am I going too fast for this audience, or what's going on? <laughs> How many still have their prostate? Anybody at all? Who'd I'm kidding, two women raised their hands. But anyway, but I loved my childhood though, it was kind of weird. But yeah, growing up with my dad, big drinker, you know, and, uh, and mom say stupid stuff. My mom would yell so loud my ears would bleed. Then she's like, did you hear me? You're thinking Helen Keller heard this woman, all right? And you think your mom is senile too, because 10 times a day your mom says, what did I just say? All right? I'm thinking, look, if you don't remember, I'm not telling you, okay, lady? <laughs> But it's always something when you're growing up, man. But my mom was nuts, my dad. And we used to go get the belt, too, when we were kids, man. I got spanked when we were kids. Kids don't get spanked anymore. They get, they get time out. In my house, time out meant how long I was unconscious, for crying out loud. <laughs> Remember time out? We had lights out. Bam! Eight! Nine! There's my mom with the big number card. Mix it up! Mix it up! <laughs> we were idiots. We used to go get our parents. Remember, I got my dad the belt to beat my butt with. Did you do that? Go get my belt. All right, remember? I'm telling my sister, hey, I get to get the belt. Yeah, and you want to know why? Because I'm a moron, that's why. I gave my dad the belt off the bathrobe. Let it rip, let it rip, baby. I don't know, man, but growing up is weird, too. I had five kids growing up, you know, me, a couple brothers and sisters. My brother's an idiot, my brother Bob. I told him your laptop has windows. He bought curtains. 
Can you believe that? Is that just stupid or what? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what an idiot my brother is. I'm telling you, I told him, hey, most accidents happen within a mile of where you live. He moved. <laughs> hey, I'm Scott Wood, Mr. Punchline. Thanks for laughing at me. Pure comedy. Mark Christopher Lawrence. Hey, thanks, Mark. Scott Wood, ladies and gentlemen, Scott Wood. Follow me on social media.